Hi, I'm Jay Bowman with FMI, and I appreciate the opportunity to share with you some of the major takeaways from our third quarter forecast for 2024, as well as just a few other thoughts that I have that I think are worth considering. So when we look at the third quarter forecast, total construction in the U.S. for 2024 is expected to exceed $2 trillion for the first time. Now, this also represents about a 6% increase over what we saw in 2023, but that construction spending is starting to slow somewhat over the next, say, five years, around three to 5% or so. Now, if we go a step down and look at some of the individual sectors, we'll start with the residential. So residential construction is really sort of a turnaround, if you will, or a reversal of where it was in 2023. We're actually seeing an increase, but it's sort of a mixed bag. Single family homes look to be up about 7% whereas multifamily could be down 25% over the next two years. What about the non-residential building sector? Well, we're seeing that same sort of 6% growth in 2024, which will really be led in the areas of public safety and manufacturing, both posting over a 20% increase in 2024 and sort of continuing that growth over the next five years. And then on the non-building side, so think of this as like heavy civil, so power, highway and street, water, wastewater, et cetera. Again, about another 8% increase in 2024 and sort of steady growth after that. Now there's two things I wanna remind you of that I brought to your attention during the second quarter. And one is just the impact of population. You know, population is probably the number one indicator of construction activity. And with the movement of people that we're seeing from places like California or New York or Illinois, to other states, whether it be Texas or Florida, we're seeing that difference of construction activity. More obviously in those areas where population is moving and perhaps struggling a little bit in those areas where population is leaving. The second thing being that even though it's still up 6% this year, from a total spending perspective, it kind of drops into that three to 5%, which is relatively flat over the next five years. And therefore, I kind of use that term of how are you going to manufacture growth in a flat market? But I still think it's important to remember that it's a massive market, $2 trillion. Even when you adjust for inflation, the next five years are five of the highest construction years we've seen in the construction industry since 1965. But there's one other thing that I want to share with you that I think is important which is in addition to what we've seen from a geographic perspective, and that's more at the segment level. Meaning if we go back and look at sort of the industry itself and understand some of the trends that are going on, we'll get a better sense of what type of products from a building perspective, from an infrastructure perspective, we might be seeing over the next couple of years. So to put this into sort of an example, let's take the healthcare industry. One of the things that we've seen is with the change in how healthcare is delivered, meaning who can do it, whether it's a doctor, the PA, now maybe even the nurse, as well as a change in medicines. What we're seeing is for the first time, medical office building might exceed hospital construction in the US. And hospitals have traditionally been 60, 65% of all healthcare construction. And you see examples of this across all segments whether it's data centers in office or what we're seeing on the education front or even in commercial with traditional restaurant and retail versus warehouse. But it's important to really pull it all the way back to what happens from a construction and engineering and architectural perspective. And with that being said, I recommend that you download the full report at fmicorp.com. Now it will provide you more details at both the segment level and even some of the geographic level. Now the next five years do represent a lot of change, whether it's what we've seen at the segment level, you know, at geographic level, and then just some of the economic headwinds that we're expecting. But it's still a huge market, and that's why I'm reminded by the quote by Peter Drucker that says, the best way to predict the future is to create it. And therefore, call one of our bankers or one of our consultants to talk about your own personal situation and how you can turn these trends into triumphs.